cells in motion is actually a bit of a play with words because motion um, indicates movement, activity, and the cells, of course, are moving, but we also want to portray with cells in motion a movement of the whole uh, concept, a movement forward, a movement into new areas, into new fields. It's a bit like a criminal investigation. We want to find out why a healthy cell uh, suddenly will become an unhealthy cell, uh, a cancerous cell, why it uh, changes its genetic program, why it then starts to move differently, why it maybe divides differently or differentiates then differently. At the moment we can take cells out, we can look at them in a petri dish, we can see how they divide and how they move and how they uh, maybe differentiate, but that may be very, very different to when that cell is sitting in, let's say, our heart or our lung or our kidneys. To study cells in motion is an extremely complex task and it's certainly not one that can be achieved by one discipline on its own. It needs a, a, a team, it needs a cluster. We need the biologists, the biochemists, the basic scientists to understand the molecules that we should be targeting, the molecules that we should be trying to visualise, which are important for defining a particular cellular behaviour. I'm working here on uh, special proteins uh, that are shown here in this lab to be key players in the disease multiple sclerosis. So we work on the animal model of multiple sclerosis and we try to further investigate these proteins in order to give a basis for uh, new targeted therapies in order to cure multiple sclerosis. To study cells in motion, we also need the chemists who can then produce the tracer molecules that mimic those uh, molecular complexes that are identified by the basic scientists. Right now, I'm designing a molecule which is used for molecular imaging. These molecules has two functions. The first function is it can dock to the specific enzyme. Second, it can radiate. So we inject the molecules to the patient, the molecule view go to the uh, specific enzyme we are interested in, and then with the uh, PET scan, we can follow the molecules and also the enzyme that we are interested in. Yeah, to study cells in motion, of course we need the physicists. They help us develop the technology to image our cells in motion. We are developing a new microscope here, which must give us uh, chemical sensitivity, which means that we must be able to look inside the cell, watch the cell, and uh, without disturbing it, without staining it. We can hold and trap cells just by laser light, optical tweezers. And with optical tweezers we can hold a single cell, we can look at the cell from all sides, and we can even hold multiple cells. We can, for example, hold two cells, we can hold a host cell and a pathogen, a bacterium, a bacterial cell, and we can bring these together. and. Uh, investigates the infection process of these two cells. We need mathematics to, in fact, get an image out of the information that we um, get from our microscopes. Microscopes generate a lot of information, but in order to clearly see the cells in motion, we need the uh, mathematicians to create algorithms to draw out the information that is vital for us. An interesting aspect in a light microscopy is that the data su usually suffer from a lot of, um, lot of noise artifacts and they are suffering from a lot of blurring effects and uh, yeah, that can be a problem if you want to interpret the biological data sets, for example cells in motion. And in, um, with our models we are able to, to remove the blur blurring effects uh, the, sm the smoothing effect that result from standard micro uh, laser microscopes and additionally we are able to, to um, remove the noise that is included in this data set. Certainly our, our aim uh, is that we want to take our basic information from science all the way to the clinic to be benefit the patient.
Our job as clinical doctors in the University Hospital in Münster is to translate the basic science or the results from basic science into the patient scenario. We want to test if the new imaging methods are really prove themselves for the patient diagnostics. Yeah, I really expect that the new developed imaging approaches that they will have a high benefit for, for patients, for early diagnosis of common diseases, diseases such as um, heart diseases, cancer. What we achieve as this group is much, much more than we would do as separate groups. Is it exciting to do, to be part of such a job? It's fabulous. It's great. It's, it's the most exciting thing because it changes every single day. You do new things every day. When you talk to a mathematician, you have completely different ideas. You come out invigorated. You're thinking in a completely different mode. And this is what we want to portray also to our students. A very fundamental um, aspect of SIM is that it introduces a completely new educational program which allows students to have modules in different faculties. So it's a true interdisciplinary education. SIM will definitely attract people who are ambitious and who want to achieve something and who want to do something new. Definitely people who are not afraid of crossing barriers, of doing new things. Well, for me personally, I think it's very interesting. Well, I try to um, make sure that the uh, people that organize it uh, know my name <laughs> and know that I'm interested. I think the big benefit of this uh, joint program or this interdisciplinary program is that um, everything is there and organized for you. You can focus on what you want to learn and what you want to take from the program for yourself rather than like spending endless hours in organizing to which lecture you want to go. I'm looking very much forward to it and uh, I'd be really happy if the program was implemented while I'm still here. So this is a place if you've got ideas and if you've got potential, this is a place to develop them. So the social aspect of SIM is also extremely important. Bringing people together in a congenial atmosphere where they're happy will help them work better. And that ranges from having a kindergarten in the building that you're working to having social events where you bring people together. So they can communicate, they can meet, they exchange ideas. They maybe start projects. We're actually big party people. That's off the record. <laughs> We're very big party people. <laughs>